Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are just beyond excited um, for this webinar and especially for this year and getting to like see some faces in real life. Um, ARM annual conference is July 14th. The exhibition is going to run two days this year. Um, so it will be actually July 13th and the 14th. The 13th is the Business and Finance Forum that we moved from the spring um, to bring you know, a, a larger group for you guys, for the exhibition and for your booth. We know that it's so important to get those, the right folks in front of you. And we think that that's the audience um, that you wanna see. In addition to obviously the huge crowd that we're gonna have at annual conference this year, and I know so many things are changing and we haven't really you know, had to deal with this before and know what summer is going to look like and know what this event is, is in for this year. So we wanna go over a lot of this today and we'll be communicating with you throughout the process leading up to the day and obviously the day of. So I think we're just gonna dive in, let's get started. We've got a lot to cover today and we're so excited to be working with Jefferson again um, like you said, we've been kind of building all of this, all of these tools, all of these resources, these webinars for you over the last three years. Um, and here's another one we're adding to, to the website and to the ticket for you. So I'm just going to kick it on over to him. Jefferson. All right. Well, thank you, Ashley. Hi, everybody. So good to see all your faces now. I can't wait someday to be at the meeting and see you all in person. So hopefully uh, everybody has stayed safe and sound, you, your colleagues, your loved ones, everyone has stayed safe and sound. And hopefully like Ashley and I, you're super pumped about getting back together at a live expo. Uh, I'm headed out to my first live expo um, the first week of June in Las Vegas. Uh, it's a really big show and I'm gonna be on the ground doing a lot of research in terms of how exhibitors and attendees or have transitioned their exhibits and their behaviors. And I'll probably be sharing some of those findings with you, maybe through one of the articles, or who knows, Ashley, we might jump on and do a quick web session with them as we get ready to go live uh, for your show. So thanks for being with me here today. Um, if you've heard me before, you know one thing about me, I don't know much, but I do know trade shows. <laughs> that is my wheelhouse. I live there, you know, I've been involved in them over 30 years now. Um, I've never viewed a show as a place to show up, fly the flag, hand out tchotchkes, scan badges and go home. I've always viewed them as a place, right? Where I had to make every dollar do the work of 10. And to that end, I've developed a series of processes uh, to make sure that you can execute and get value for the time and money that you invest in shows. So let's jump into some of the content here. Uh, we sat here today in, I'm losing track of the days, May 10th, um, Friday, March 13th, um, dark Friday, right? Black Friday, uh, scary Friday, right? Boom, our industry got locked down. The coronavirus really started invading America and it started showing up everywhere and it got locked down and we pivoted to virtual uh, and ARM did a, a great job of helping you, uh, you know, enter that arena. We did some live training for that on virtual. And uh, now, thank goodness for the vaccine. Uh, it showed up. It's in mass distribution right now. And it's really giving us all that hope and that confidence that uh, we are headed back to live, which is what we all love. And, you know, as, as a species, you know, we're connection creatures. We don't do well being uh, locked up in uh, houses and caves for long times. And I think if there's anything that we've learned over the last 15 months as we ventured into the arena of virtual and digital exhibiting, I would say it's this, nothing it replaces the energy, the excitement, and the value of live face-to-face -face marketing. Right, that's what we've learned. And and while there, I believe there will be a digital extension to live events going forward, um, I don't see it replacing what we do when we get together live. So I hope you're excited about that. I sure am. I know Ashley is too. So, um, so let me share 
some of the reasons why we're optimistic about live. Um, number one, Freeman, the big general service contractor in the expo industry is doing literally on the ground, real-time research in all the major convention cities around America. And what they found in a study they released a few weeks ago, right now that 86% uh, of attendees, because of vaccines being in distribution, uh, are confident about coming back to live expos. Uh, at that point, 82% of exhibitors were confident. Now, exhibitors and attendees may be facing different issues, okay? Second, um, flying on airplanes. I know there's some concern out there uh, for some people. I don't know how many of you are flying, but um, the Department of Defense did a study in, in December. I believe they spent about $90 million uh, to research uh, the, the chances of con contracting the coronavirus on a commercial aircraft. And they published in military news. And interestingly, uh, they said it's almost impossible to get it on a commercial uh, airplane, which is anyone who's going to fly. That's got to be really good news for you. Speaking of flying, uh, check this out. Now, this was as of April 1st. Um, 1.56 million people a day uh, headed to the airport and walked on airplanes. I flew two weeks ago. Um, I always run late. That's just how I roll. I, I normally have TSA pre-check. It's a Sunday morning. I'm getting on a 9 a.m. flight. I get to the airport about 40 minutes before board time. It's 150 people in the security line. What you know, right? I'm thinking I'm just going to roll in on a Sunday morning. No one's going to be there. Uh, the airports are busy. Don't let the, what the media is showing you. Don't believe everything you see on TV. You're never going to see these stats or numbers on uh, TV. But hey, look at the TSA numbers. And finally, this one really blew my mind. So the International Association for Expositions and Events, which is our industry's big association, uh, partnered with an organization called Epistemics, which essentially does scientific data-based models. And what they said is because of the health and safety measures that our industry has adopted, the current infection and vaccination rates that the chances of getting COVID at a live event with 20,000 people, look at the data, are nearly 0%. So I don't know about you, but this is exciting news. This is what we've been waiting you know, 15 months for to finally get some good news out there that things are reopening and we're about to get back to doing what we love to do. And so we're so excited that you're on here with us today and we're so excited that you're gonna be part of this journey. Please share this information with everybody you know because don't we need some good news? <laughs> Hopefully you're with me on that. All right, I'm gonna bring uh, Ashley back on for a moment to bring you up to speed on some of the expectations health and safety from ARM, what, what is probably expected from you as of what we know now. She's gonna give you a quick overview of what's happening inside the Mystic Lake Casino with regard to health and safety, and then kind of give you uh, just a glance at how the expo is likely to look and feel different as we re-enter the live arena. Ashley, back to you. Thanks so much, Jefferson. So, we know that things are ever changing here in Minnesota. Um, I don't know if all of you are local, if we've got some out of state folks on this call, but last week our governor did um, a press conference on Thursday and things are going to be changing from what we know right now between now and July. So May 28th, our event venues are going to be increasing their capacity. So right now we are only allowed to have 250 attendees at annual conference, uh, attendees, exhibitors, people, anything, 250. But May 28th, those restrictions are set to lift. So we should be able to get around our normal numbers, um, barring that all of those people who still want to attend and are able to attend. So we won't have any limitations on attendance, which is great for you. Um, we can get all of those folks there and in front of you guys. So that being said, we are still monitoring. We're going to be working with Mystic Lake to make sure that we are still following any um, COVID protocols um, that we need to in July. 
Um, also set to end is our mask mandate in July, July 1st, that is set to um, end as long as we have enough uh, folks vaccinated here in the state of Minnesota. So another thing that might be changing, but this is where we're at right now um, today. And again, it could change. So when we look at this, obviously clean environment, that's not going away. We're still gonna be having a clean, healthy, safe environment for everybody. Wearing masks, well, the mask mandate mandate might be lifted at that point, I would still um, expect some folks to be wearing masks. And if we need to, we will enforce that um, if that mandate is not lifted. Obviously, hand sanitizers, we're going to have healthy staff. We're not going to be accepting any um, cash, you know, contactless payments, all of that. And what we would expect from you, all of those things, the social distancing, if we need to wear a mask, if that's part of the protocol, we will be. Um, and if, if you don't feel good, um, stay home. All of the all the things we've been driving, you know, the last 15 months, like Jefferson said, we will be following these and enforcing them as we need to. And this is directly from Mystic Lake Casino, their event center, what they're implementing and what um, is necessary um, on their behalf. And that PDF is available in the resource tab for you guys. So you can check that out in a little bit more detail. Um, if you need. So again, kind of what the conference is gonna look like, it's gonna look a little bit different. And again, this is all just from today's perspective, um, things are ever changing, but um, masks will be required if, if the mandate isn't lifted. We're gonna have the hand sanitizer, you know, this is all kind of a, a review here for you. Directional signage, if we need to keep flows going one direction or another. All of your exhibit booths are gonna be in our pre-function space. So it's gonna be in the wide open. Folks won't have to go into a closed room to see all of you like we did in 2019. So that will help again with the flow and we're gonna continue with our breakout sessions being staggered. Um, that social distancing will help in that respect too. And food processes, those might change, but right now pre-packaged portioned to reduce that unnecessary contact. So as things evolve over the next two months, three months here, um, we'll keep you guys updated. But again, this is what it looks like from today. All right, thank you, Ashley. Uh, great job, yeah. Things are moving fast as we can all see. And you know, the best that we can do right now is kind of give you what things look like as of today and know that a lot of this can change. So you're gonna wanna be continually paying close attention to any and all communications that come from Ashley and the ARM team. So you're able to quickly make those changes as they become visible to us. Okay, uh, so let's, um, the top four health and safety things, I wanna just add one more piece on this and then we're gonna go into the trade show productivity. Uh, the things that I think we need to be thinking about at, for exhibitors as we reopen shows is crowds. I think um, you're gonna wanna have fewer staff in your booth. You know, you don't want people to look into a booth and see a elbow to elbow people in there. That's gonna make a fair amount of people uncomfortable. If you had planned on using any form of crowd gathering tactics, you know, like magicians or live presenters or anything like that, you may wanna shelve that for this year because even though the mask mandate and some of these things will drop, there's a lot of people are still gonna be in that very uh, uncertain, fearful state. Um, I would avoid any form of lines or cues to get or do anything in your booth. And in general, I would move toward having more open space, just bringing less stuff, less people. That way your booth feels like a safe place to enter and uh, engage. Uh, the second thing, social distancing. Again, this is as of right now. Um, you know, if a mask is required, we got to wear it. Uh, you know, three to six feet apart. I know there's been movement from six feet to three. As a general rule, I've always believed that arm's length distance until we're invited in, it's a pretty good rule, uh, even if these, um, some of these uh, restrictions are gone. And if you feel like you need to do this, if you have a medium or a large size booth and you really wanna keep that visibility high for your staff and your visitors, a lot of companies today are putting decals on their floors just to kind of as visual reminders. Um, next thing will be booth sanitation. If masks are required, you'll definitely wanna bring some extra ones. 
uh, especially if you're using those top throw away ones, they get kind of funky after a few hours. Um, hand sanitizer in your booth. Take a look around at the, the properties in your booth and ask yourself what surfaces are likely to be high touch surfaces uh, and have a plan to clean those frequently. And it's not a bad idea to post signage in your booth in terms of what you're doing to keep your visitors safe. Similar to what you would see when you enter a restaurant or a retail store, just to create that additional comfort, right? And finally, uh, touch-free interactions. Um, in terms of literature, it's probably a good idea to go to uh, digital literature for this year and save you some money too. If you're gonna use any form of uh, tchotchkes or samples or giveaways, I would encourage having those packaged, uh, right? So they're, what's inside is clean. And um, I would avoid uh, serving any form of food or beverage in the booth at this point. Again, all this is uh, very subject to change. So let's pivot. Um, how many of you uh, go to your uh, chat right now or your question tab, whichever you're seeing on your console, I'd like to know how many of you are traveling in for the show, meaning you're going to get on an airplane or, or you're going to come from a distance. Go to your question tab right now and just type the word yes if you're going to be um, flying in to the show. Let me take a look. Okay, Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, anybody else traveling in? What I want to talk about here is the idea if you're under a travel restriction, how to go about requesting a exception, okay? So here's the thing, right? It may or it may not be flexible. What I found in general, the bigger the company, you know, the higher up the mandate comes down from, the harder it is to get that exception. Smaller the company, the easier it is. So I guess that's the first question. Does it feel like there might be a little flexibility? My thought is that if you believe in your heart of hearts, that exhibiting at the ARM meeting this year is important to your company, it's important to your customers, never hurts to ask, never hurts to ask. But when you ask, you're gonna wanna provide a little bit of uh, documentation to make your management or leadership feel a little more comfortable and confident. The first thing you're gonna wanna address is health and safety precautions. And you can use stuff straight out of this webinar, like that document, what the Mystic Lake Casino is gonna do to keep you safe. Uh, the images that Ashley showed you earlier about, you know, what they're going to be doing and what we expect from you. Uh, also, give them supporting information, like, you know, if they're flying in, uh, link to the military news, this study. Uh, go pull the current numbers. Uh, if you go to TSA, actually, if you just go on Google and type uh, TSA checkpoint uh, today, it'll, it'll take you straight to their site. And, you know, maybe your boss is or isn't aware that, uh, you know, a million and a half people are getting on airplanes per day now, right? Look at those numbers on the uh, 1.2, 1.4, 1.5. Um, second is a business reason, right? You've got to say, okay, we want to do this show. We think it's important. Here's how we and here's how the organizer and the venue is going to keep us safe. Here's why I think we need to be there from a business reason in terms of brand visibility, in terms of customer interactions, in terms of lead generation, in terms of maybe rebounding your sales if sales went down as a result of the pandemic. So a business reason and an economic reason, okay? Why economically this is in our company's best interest to be at the meeting this year. So to that end, I'm gonna walk you through a process uh, by the way, again, um, go, to, go to your question queue right now. Here's the question I'm going to ask you. Has your business been negatively impacted from the pandemic? Has it meaning, have your sales been flatline or have they declined or dropped? Go to your question tab right now. And if your sales and your revenue have flatlined or dropped, just give me a quick yes in the question queue. So I know how much effort to spend on this slide here. Uh, yes. And by the way, I'm not going to share your names here, but fire away. I'd like to have everybody submit this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. looks like we got several yeses so far. Okay. So what I want to do now is um, if, if your company has lost revenue due, due to the pandemic, it's very possible that your CFO and your CEO are in a cash protection mode. 
they're kind of thinking like, you know, we've lost revenue here. We're very fearful to let go of cash right now. Um, so here's some questions that I want you to ponder. If your business is down, if you've lost business, what is it that you need most right now? Well, I'll tell you what you need. You need leads, you need sales, you need checks in the bank, right? So how important is getting face-to-face -face contact with potential customers? How important is that in how you acquire revenue for your company? All right, and then number three, if you've said that your business is flat or down, and you've said that face-to-face -face contact is important in how you open doors, build relationships, and bring in customers, then I want you to ask yourself a very um, strange question. How does not exhibiting help you get that, right? These are really good questions that you could uh, talk about with your team. If there's any fear, if there's any concern about investing in the show. Okay, now what I'm gonna do on the next slide is rather than detail this formula, I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. And by the way, I want everybody on this webinar to do this with me, whether or not your revenue is down. What I'm gonna teach you in this model is how to predict and generate measurable ROI from trade shows. I've been doing this 30 years. I'm extremely process-based and I'm results focused, right? And this formula is the centerpiece that I've used with my clients to help generate combined over $800 million in results. So this works, you just gotta work it. So grab your pen, let's do this now. And I want everybody to do this because at the end, what I want each of you on here is to type in the last number that I show you on the bottom of the page. Okay, here we go. So the trade show budgeting rule of thumb is floor space cost times three, at a minimum times three. Now, ideally you wanna go times four or times five. That way you got enough money to do the right things that most exhibitors won't do. But I'm gonna play it conservative on this formula today and I want you to do the same. So here's the thing, a single space at the ARM annual meeting, floor space is $900. Now, by the way, write this down. That's probably one of the best deals in America. You know why? I just got the 2020 research report. The average cost of a single booth space in North America, write this down, is $3,320 or $33.20 a square foot. At the ARM meeting, it's $9 a square foot. I'm not kidding you when I tell you I think it's one of the best buys in America. It is. The numbers prove that. Okay, now this gives you kind of like what your total show budget, right? Okay, now the expo hall will be open for 16 hours. We're going to call that your field of opportunity. We're also going to try to win the game from the exhibit hall. And anything that happens in the morning, the golden hours in the morning, and in the entertaining hours in the evening, anything happens outside of the booth is like the icing on the cake, right? So we're gonna try to win the game from the hall, okay? So you got 16 exhibiting hours. Now, question, how many of your staff are you going to have standing in your booth on average for those 16 hours for the purpose of talking to visitors. The rule of thumb, the staffing rule of thumb is 50 square feet per staffer. In a 10 by 10, you have space for two staffers. Don't overcrowd your booth and also don't undercrowd it, right? If you only have one person in your booth for those 16 hours, what happens when other people come in? You're gonna miss them, right? So follow that 50 square feet per staffer. Now listen very carefully to this next number. I want you to set a target number of interactions per hour per staffer. By interaction, what I mean is that your staff, one person is talking to a visitor. Here's the, what I've found over my 30 years of doing this. Three interactions per hour, conservative, 
four, moderate, five, aggressive, maybe aggressive, depending on the show. I want you to pick a number between three and five. And because of the pandemic and how things are going to look and feel different, I want you to lean toward the three. Okay. Now, multiply these three numbers together, and you have one of the most important numbers you will ever understand about exhibiting. Because at the end of the day, trade shows are about face and next. It's about putting your company identity, your product services, your staff face to face with somebody that can influence and make a buying decision, right? And get a commitment to what happens next. Okay, so this number, 96, this is what I call your exhibit interaction capacity. If you execute properly, you are buying the opportunity to stand face to face with 96 people over the length of the show. Now that's going to raise a lot of follow up questions like who are the right people? And what are you going to do between now and showtime to get in their mind and get on their agenda, right? But this is a planning tool. If you can attract and interact with 96 of the right people, you're going to have an incredible show. Okay. Now, I want you to divide your total show budget by your total number of interactions. Okay. In my example, look on the screen here. The cost per interaction is $28.12. Now, look to the right. You'll see that in North America, to put a body in front of a body out in the field, the average cost is on the low end $598 to an average of $1,114. So when it comes to investing time and money, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? It's kind of mind blowing, isn't it? Here's essentially what I'm call saying that if I called you on the phone and I told you I had one potential customer, right? I'm going to bring them to your business. I'm going to let them stay with you as long as they want to stay. I'm going to drive them home when they're done. Here's the question. Would you pay me $28.12 to bring a, a buyer to your business? Yes or no? I imagine you're all nodding like I am. Yes. And my follow-up question would be, how many would you want me to bring at that price? The answer is right on the screen for you, 96. Okay. So if you have a boss owner partner who's looking at the spend, right? And is saying, wow, I can't, why would we spend all that money right now? Here's the first thing I would tell them. We're not spending anything. We're investing in our brand visibility in interacting with our customers, in generating leads, and getting our business out of this hole that maybe the pandemic has put us in. We're investing, we're not spending. And oh, by the way, you're cutting the cost of putting a body in front of a body, in this example, massively. Hey, and by the way, if you got a CFO, show them this number. They will totally understand this. Now, here you go. I want to make sure that it's safe for you to make this investment. And I want it to be crystal clear what you got to do to get your money back and then some. So what I want you to write down is your average value of a customer or your average sale amount. Listen carefully. If you sell a product that is a one-time purchase, they buy it once and they're done. That's it. You get one deal, they're done then I want you to write your average sale amount. If you have a product or service that they buy and they repeat buy over a year, three years, five years, however far you wanna go, then I want you to use the value of one customer. So for my example here, $5,000, right? And I'm gonna say that this is my annual value of a customer to me, 5,000. The average customer stays with me three years, I'm not even going to count the three or I'm only going to count year one. So it's 5,000. Now I'm going to divide that by my exhibiting investment. So I'm putting $2,700 in cash into the show. Here's the major question. How many customers do I need to generate a return on investment? It's about 0 0.03. And let me divide that number quickly because I think I may be a little off there. 
I'm sorry, it's 0 0.054, change that. That number fell off to me. I didn't update my formula, write that down. So I don't, it, it's not really what's on the screen here that matters now. What matters is what is your number? I want you to go, everybody on here right now, take a breath, take a drink of water, I'm going to. Go to your question tab right now, and I want you to share two numbers with me. Your total interaction, the blue number, how many interactions you have the capacity for, and the number or percentage that need to convert for you to get a return on investment. Go ahead and do that now, and I'll give you just a moment. I'm gonna flip off the camera and play the Jeopardy music. <laughs> okay, we're back. So share that number with me. I would love to see, and I need you to understand this formula because if you're trying to use trade shows to drive revenue for your company, this works. I've been doing it for 30 years. I've pulled over 800 million in shows. It's the exact formula that we use. Okay, all right, let's keep on rolling. Oh, by the way, my closing question before we go on that. So what are the odds that if you put your people and your products in front of 96 people like this example, that you can generate a half of one customer over time? To me, those are really good odds. In fact, if you can't convert one out of 96, we should probably have a side conversation that has nothing to do with this webinar. Okay, let's keep, let's keep rolling now. Good time to submit questions, right? Anything's flashed into your mind. Maybe you got a question about the show coming up. Go to your question box, type. Maybe you got a question about anything trade show related. Go to your question box and type your question, okay? And I'm gonna take a look at that when we close. So here we go. Now, you have probably been on the shelf with regard to live exhibiting since for some of you, maybe two years, right? Here's the question I wanna ask. This has been a very unique opportunity for all of us. We have been taken out of live shows. What a great chance to stand off, to use some of this downtime, to stand off and look at the way you executed exhibiting prior to the pandemic, to figure out what was working and therefore what you should keep doing and to figure out where your gaps where your holes are, how you can re-enter the live exhibiting arena better than ever before. So what I did uh, in the fourth quarter of last year, had a lot of downtime, right? I'm in trade shows, this is what I do, they were closed down. I went back and reviewed my 30 years of work with my direct exhibiting clients. I looked at what we did, when we did it, how we did it. What I was on the hunt for was, can we create a replicable, scalable process, right? I'm process-based and I'm results-focused. Can we somehow take all of this 30 years of work, now that I have all this free time, and organize it into a framework that any exhibitor of any size could use? I don't care if you're in a 10 by 10 or 100 by 100, right? And here it is. This will be the first time you've seen it. It's the first time I've showed it to this audience in a live webinar. I call it the exhibit marketing process. It is a systemic framework that identifies the strategic factors that you need to address if you want your exhibit program to support your core business objectives and deliver measurable financial value beyond cost. And it starts on the left and it works its way right across. Select the right shows, align reasons with goals, design a valuable interactive visitor experience, attract enough of the right people, engage your visitors, impress them and discover that opportunity, capture information rich leads with a clear next step, follow up to convert those commitments to action and measure, measure your performance, measure the value you generated, measure the ultimate return on investment that you got, and finally, learn the lessons so you get better and better and better at every show. Here's the promise that I'll make to you with this process. If you address all eight of these factors, you will win at every trade show you do from this day forward. Every show, it's a slam dunk, you'll win every show. Here's the warning. If you neglect, skip over, avoid, 
addressing any one or any combination of these factors, your results are going to be limited. Each factor you pull out, you're gonna get less and less and less and less. So I'm assuming that you're with me on this webinar today because you wanna get more. You look at these shows and go, man, these things take a lot of time, right? They're expensive, they cost a lot of money. Well, now you realize it might not be that expensive, especially the arm meeting, but you wanna get value, you wanna get results. So I'm gonna ask you to look at these eight reasons. And if you're not jumping through hoops with the results you've been getting from shows, ask yourself this question and put a circle around each one. Which of these areas has most impacted or limited your performance and your return on investment? Take a moment and do that now. By the way, here's what I'd like you all to do. Uh, go to your question tab right now, open it up. Go ahead and do that. And I want you to type in the numbers of which of these areas, one through eight. Like you might type like, four and seven, or you might type like three and six, or whatever the numbers are for you. Go ahead right now, go to, look at these eight factors, ask yourself which one's most limit, go to your question queue right now, and I want you to type in the number one through eight, which one's most limit, and I'm going to look at that right now. Let me see it. All right, three and four. All right, so the first one, designing the visitor experience and attracting enough of the right people. Uh, number four, Julie, thank you, attracting the right people. Uh, number seven, Marisa, following up, thank you. Uh, what else? Those of you, keep those coming in, right? Hey, remember, like Dr. Phil always says, you know, the TV talk uh, doctor, he says, you can't fix what you don't acknowledge, right? And part of fixing something, making it better, is getting awareness in terms of what you need to fix. This framework gives you the roadmap to do it. Okay, so thank you for sharing. Those of you who did, I'm gonna close out now with the 15 most important lessons I've learned over my 30 years. I'm gonna be honest with everybody on this webinar and tell you that when I saw my entire year fall in March and April last year, and it just went on and on and on. There was a moment in August, September, where I honestly was wondering if I was gonna stay in the industry. I was beginning to look seaward and ask, you know, how else, what else might I do with all my knowledge, my time, my skills, my energy? Uh, like everybody, it was hard, right? I went through that hard time. But I, I came to realize that I love shows. I'm a trade show junkie, right? This is my tribe. This is what I do. So I decided to sit down and I go, if I were going to exit and I had to leave behind, right, uh, a journal of the most important things that I've learned over my 30 year history and it shows, what would I say? What would be those 15 most important things? Now, I'm sharing these with you because I want you to look at these 15 very carefully much like the eight areas, and these will point to how to make your program better. Number one, reasons are not enough. Every one of you have reasons. If I asked, why are you exhibiting? I know you would tell me. Brand awareness, meet with customers, thought leadership, uh, present our products, get leads. Fine, those are reasons, but listen carefully. Reasons are not enough. What you have to do is convert reasons to goals, written goals backed up with a written action plan, executed and measured back to. And your goals, my second big lesson, should address the three big value areas of exhibiting, marketing, sales, and customer relationship management. If you will go into every show you do this day forward with a clearly defined goal, right, in each of these areas, and a plan and execute, you'll win at every show you do. Number three, when it comes to the money, keep strict accounts. There's a lot of places where the dollar goes and it is so easy to spend, 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 spend. So if you don't have a really good budgeting tool, so you're tracking where it's going, how it compares to the averages, get one. In fact, I'm gonna offer you one right now. Uh, if you will drop me an email, let me go to my thing. I'm gonna send you a free one right now. I'm gonna put my email address up right now. 
It is Jefferson at tradeshowturnaround.com. Okay, let me make sure I got that spelled right before I press publish. If you will go there and drop me an email, I will send you a complete exhibit cost control budgeting tool. It'll blow your mind. Keep strict accounts. I'm going to give it to you for free for being here today. All right. Number four, clarity is power. Not everybody attending this show is your ideal visitor. Who is your ideal visitor? Your ability to define who you're targeting in great detail, right? A persona, if you will, right? Know exactly who you're trying to attract and interact with. That's power. Number five, if you have multiple product services, don't try to bring everything. Don't try to feature everything. Lead with your showstopper. Here's the hierarchy. New, top of the list. A product service that addresses a top of the mind issue or concern and your bread and butter or your pillar products. Leave everything else at home. Number six, lesson, right? People aren't really coming to trade shows to make buying decisions, right? That would be a end game as a result of visiting. They're coming to learn, they're coming to solve problems, and they're coming to seize opportunities. Think less about your products, think less about your services, think more about the problems you solve, what you can teach people, and what opportunities are within their current facility that you can help them take advantage of. Don't worry about your products, right? Focus on learning, solving problems, seizing opportunities. They'll come running to your booth. Number seven, the number one way that attendees want to engage with an exhibit is through some form of a presentation demonstration, be it a one-to-one, -one, be it on a, a touchscreen computer, be it on an iPad tablet, or whatever. Give tremendous thought as to how you're going to show, tell, and present your product services. Number eight, there's two big questions in the customer's mind. You must ask, answer both questions. Number one, why should I visit your booth at all? Why should I be interested in your product services at all? Number two, why should I buy from you? You know, there's going to be 40, 50, 100 other booths at the show. There's five, 10, 15, 20 other people that sell what you sell, why you? Those are the two big questions that you've got to answer in the mind of your target audience. Why at all, why us? Number nine, win the game before kickoff, especially in a, the wake of a pandemic where attendees are gonna be a little more sensitive. Highly targeted, well-designed pre-show marketing campaign. That's how you win the game and I believe we have up on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center. Uh, we have two webinars on the ARM Exhibitor Success. One of them is defining and delivering your value prop, and the other is increasing market visibility and driving booth traffic. It's available for free on the ARM show website. Go grab it. Number 10, don't let your exhibit get lost in the crowd. Make sure it stands out. Make it grab attention. Make it communicate what you do. Make it communicate why they should be interested, why they should stop and engage. Make it easy to get into, make it easy to get out of. Make sure there's something interactive, learning and fun for them to do in a booth. And I'm not talking about putters, right? And Plinko boards, I'm talking about presenting your product services. Number 11, the, the environment is different always, but it's gonna be more different, especially as we reopen. Your booth staff is gonna make or break your success. They have got to be trained on how to interact in this environment. In fact, I wrote an article, Ashley, I'm gonna send you a new article complimentary on preparing your booth staff for interacting in this new environment. And I'm gonna be updating that when I get back from World of Concrete. Number 13, if you're not writing orders at the event, which most of you aren't, I imagine, and you ever wanna get a return on investment, real product, the thing you walk off the show floor with is leads. So you've got to define what is a lead, what questions you need to ask, what information do you need to capture, how are you going to follow up on these leads, how are you going to track them through to the ultimate conversion, right? If you're not writing orders, leads are the real product. Number 14, what gets measured gets done and gets improved. In fact, it's really hard to improve something that you're not measuring, right? So I've got to come up with a simple set of metrics performance metrics, 
value metrics, return on investor metrics. Finally, you should walk out of every show you do within a week of show closing time, sit down with your team and ask yourself, what are the three big lessons that we learn that we're gonna use at every show we do going forward to get better and better and better from every show? So if I had to write that journal and hand it to you and go, I'm leaving the industry today, I'm off to the retire in the wherever, here's the playbook, you got it. The eight step exhibit marketing process, the 15 most important lessons. Again, I'll close with this and promise you, if you really take to heart these things that I've shared with you, not only can you win big at the ARM convention coming up, you'll be able to win big at every show you do going forward. I've seen it, I've been part of it. Combined, we've pulled $800 million in results from shows over the years. This stuff works. The only question that remains is, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do, right? Knowledge in itself, you get inspired, it's not power. What are you gonna do? Action is what matters. So I'm gonna open a question queue and ask you again, um, which of these 15 lessons do you think like, boy, I really need to address this. If I do, it can improve my exhibit performance and my ROI. Which of these 15 do you need to address? Again, I mentioned these replayable webinars. So on the ARM website, here's the URL. There's a page called the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center. Ashley cares deeply about your success. She is the one that went to battle and fought to get this included in the show budget a few years back. She totally cares about you as exhibitors. Keep learning because they don't teach us stuff in school, right? Most of us were never taught how to exhibit. We just showed up and we watched others. Unfortunately, a lot of what we watched was incorrect, right? They were mistaking activity for results. I'm not so much worried about the activity. I'm concerned about the results. So Ashley, back to you for additional thoughts, closing comments. Thanks so much, Jefferson. All this information, you guys, is so helpful and we are so appreciative, Jefferson, of you spending your time and creating all of this for us and for our universe. Um, I know these folks are gonna take it and run with it and it's gonna be a really awesome show. Um, just like Jefferson said, we have all of these resources, um, recorded webinars, everything on our website. If you haven't been to our website recently, we just updated it, just launched the new one last week. Um, so poke around there and if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to Jefferson, myself, we're here to help and we're so excited to see you guys. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for logging in. Uh, we will see you on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center and please bring your A game. Let's reopen the R manual meeting and let's blow everybody away. Let's bring exhibits that bring energy, that bring excitement. Let's give the attendees that come and enter that exhibit hall an experience of their lifetime, the kind of experience that they go back and tell their friends, did you go to the arm meeting this year? No, you must have been crazy. <laughs> That's what we're going for and we need your help on that. So let's do this. I will see you again very soon. Ashley, thank you so much always for the trust and confidence you put in me. Thank you, we appreciate right. it. See you again soon, everybody, thanks.